So here we are with depositional glacial landforms. This means that we're leaving material behind this time. And so the first one is going to be till. And so you'll see this very mixed material sitting in here, lots of different grain sizes, just no sorting at all. Um, and so just anything from, you know, bigger pieces to really, really fine pieces. If you got in there, you'd see some mud. And so this is the kind of material that glaciers leave behind. There really isn't a lot of sorting. It's just a very mechanically um, violent process where you're just smashing everything apart. So you're expecting to see this sort of uh, type of material left behind. All right, and so then this is going to be moraine material. And so moraines, you can see, are these ridges of sediment that we're kind of seeing kind of everywhere at the ends and in the middle and along the sides of these glaciers. And so let's go through each of the types. Um, along the sides of them, we have these lateral moraines. And so this forms as rock material kind of falls from the sides as it gets eroded and kind of collects right there. It also gets kind of shoved off to the side too. Um, so it's lateral. You can see where you have two lateral moraines that come together, you form medial moraines. They run in the center there. So these medial moraines would have um, merged somewhere up further up valley. You would have had a couple glaciers that merged and formed those. Um, you also get these end moraines here, so these end moraines. So they're at the very end. Um, and what's happening here is a little bit of it's being shoved to the the base there, but this glacier used to be all the way out here at the very last end moraine, which we call a terminal moraine. And it would have kind of just sat there for a while. The ice would have sat right in here and melted out this material and let it accumulate at the end there. And then we have a short recession. So the glacial ice would have moved back a little bit. We'd have formed another moraine, which we call a uh, recessional moraine because it receded. And then we have another uh, moraine sitting in here, which would have been also an end moraine, but another recessional moraine there. So these end moraines are all there at the very um, end of the extent of the glacial ice. Um, and then we're going to have what's called ground moraine. And so this would be moraine that's just left on the ground in between stuff. So it's just kind of a generic term that we use for everything else. And you can see them really nicely in here. And so the one that sticks out the most to me is actually this medial moraine, because it's kind of in a weird spot there. But we'd have lateral moraines along the side. Here's some lateral moraine on the side. Another medial moraine where these uh, glaciers are emerging. Uh, and then of course we can't see the end moraines because we're not at the end of the glacier here. Uh, the next thing is an outwash plain. So you can see this nice glacier coming down the valley here and here it's ending and there would be all this end moraine material there. And here's some medial moraines once again. Um, and the outwash plain is just where all that ice starts to melt away and leaves kind of this mix of till and other materials. Um, it tends to be a little more well sorted because you have water transporting it, but it would look very much like what we saw in that very first picture of till, but maybe just a little better sorted. Uh, erratics is the next thing, which actually, if we end up at the bottom picture here, let's look at what that is. So here is this piece of, in this case, sandstone, this pinky rock that's left on top of this limestone. And we think, oh, how did this get here? Uh, water probably didn't transport it. It's really big. And so if we look back to the top picture, what would have happened is we had glacial ice moving over the surface and it would have chunked off a piece of that sandstone as the glacier flowed to the right here, um, it would have carried with it in the second image um, that piece of sandstone. Eventually, as that ice melts away, so you can see the glacier retreated in this third image here, um, it would have just dropped that boulder down, and so we call that an erratic. And then kettle and kettle lake formations. This is kind of a fun one. Um, ultimately, what we're looking for is just a um, low spot, a depression with some water in it. So how do we do that? So the way we do that is that sometimes when we have a retreating glacier, so our glacier is retreating to the right this time, it might leave a big chunk of ice. So you have to think about this as a really big piece of ice, kind of like an iceberg, but out on land. And then we might have some more sediment that deposits on top of it. And then that block of ice um, gets all cozied up there and starts to melt. And as it melts, this overlying rock kind of collapses down. So you can see that collapse right in here. And it can be filled with water as it rains and snows and things. And so that would be our kettle is the actual depression, and then kettle lake would be when it gets filled. And so you have that here. This is a depression that formed um, from that block of melting ice. So you can see really big, and then um, we're going to get a lake as it fills with water. 
And then our last one is going to be a drumlin. So that's this feature way back in the background here. And you can see that it has a really steep slope on one side and then a really gentle slope coming over here. And we're not 100% sure how these form, uh, but it is a depositional landform. So this is a bunch of glacial material that get dropped. Um, got dropped there. And so we do know that it can tell us the direction that the ice retreated in. So it's actually a very long ridge, something that would be extending, if you were looking from the top, a real long ridge um, that has this steep side and this gentle side. And so the glacier would have actually retreated off to the left there and left this uh, feature sitting in there. And that would be it. So those are our depositional landforms.